So I want you to draw the equation for a wedge angle and describe the variables. How do dynamic wedges work and what are its advantages? What is a universal wedge? How is the wedge transmission factor defined? How much does a physical wedge attenuate the beam? And what is the contralateral breast dose between universal or dynamic wedge? So first and foremost, know the wedge angle and know the variable. So we're going to say that theta is equal to 90 degrees minus phi over two. So you have to know that equation and now let's describe the variable. So this ultimately is the angle through which an isotope curve is tilted at the central ray of the beam at a depth of 10 cm. That is what theta is, that is the wedge angle. So this phi is the hinge angle and that is the angle between the central axis of the two beams. It's kind of similar like, so like a wedge pair. And an optimum relationship exists so that this provides the most uniform dose when you utilize the wedge angle, when you consider what your fields are, the field geometry, and you can figure out what this value, the hinge angle is, that will tell you what the wedge angle should be. So how do dynamic wedges work and what are its advantages? So they create beam profiles, or specifically wedged beam profiles, through the dynamic motion of the jaw within the treatment beam. So there is no beam hardening, and it really reduces the scatter outside the field. So those are, those are its advantages. And the dynamic wedges are really neat. You need to use do QA on them on a monthly basis to verify dose. And then really just that jaw in your machine moves and the speed at which it moves is going to determine what the wedge angle it is replicating is. So, of course, if there's a higher wedge angle, it may move a little slower and, you know, vice versa. So really neat technology. It's really nice not to have to use a physical wedge. So you don't need to go in the room. You don't have the beam hardening and you don't have as much scatter. So now what is a universal wedge? So typically... Uh, this is used by Electa. It's the only machine that I know of that uses this. And essentially, they use a single wedge of 60 degrees. And this is inside the gantry head. Now, that's used with conjunction with open fields to make the desired wedge angle by changing the ratio of open to wedge monitor units within the treatment field. So the higher the angle you need, say you need a wedge of 75 degrees, then more MUs are given in the wedge. So essentially some of the field in the beam is given with that 60 degree wedge in the field and some of it is given without. And so depending on the ratio of MUs given with the wedge in compared to wedge out, that is going to replicate a wedged field. So how much does a physical or how is the wedge transmission factor defined? So essentially, this is the ratio of doses with and without the wedge at a point in a phantom along the central axis. So you want to measure past Dmax, and it's a function of the beam energy, the field size, and the depth of measurement. So the universal dynamic wedges. So universal wedges provide, I'll put right here, about 1.5% more dose due to scatter relative to the central axis. So that is a good brief overview of wedges, how they are used. And if you got any questions about that, please let me know. It's important to know that equation, know dynamic and universal wedges and when you would use each one and really what the advantages clinically of using a dynamic wedge compared to a physical wedge are. So if you have any questions, comment below. Thanks for watching and best of luck studying.